rest my knee up and, and keep getting it healthy. Um, I think any time off of it is a good thing. Um, and for the team, it's, it's good to, you know, we got some injuries fixed up. Um, guys who needed, uh, you know, some time off too, got, got that time off. And, uh, you know, we looked pretty fresh today at practice, which was a good thing. We had a, a quick jump, um, which you would expect off, off a of bye week. So, uh, yeah, no, it was really helpful. You know, uh, there was some time to, you know, get away and watch some football at home and, and see the other side of Saturdays, which, which was fun too. Um, but it made me miss, uh, made me miss game day even more. So, uh, we're, we're excited to, you know, have that bye week behind us now and, uh, and on to Purdue. I'm just gonna ask on the mental side. Do you do you just watch games because you enjoy football? Do you try to get away from it for a few days? Um. Yeah. I mean, during the week, there's a uh, there's time to you know completely un just unplug. Um. You know, take that mental break, which is important. Um. You gotta you gotta have balance in your life, and uh, you know when when we're doing football 24/7 throughout for, throughout the season, you know sometimes it's really helpful to you know go out and uh, and do something that doesn't involve the sport. Um. And, and, it's, and then on Saturday, you know, I think anyone who loves football is going to watch college football when it's on TV. Um, personally, I set up like three or four TVs in my living room and watched three or four games. Uh, and then on, same thing on Sunday, too. With uh, But I didn't know about Red Zone. I didn't know you could watch every game on one TV, which would have been nice to know. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was, a, it was a good week, good refreshing week. And uh, like I said, now we're just excited to move on to Purdue. Red, Red Zone was a new... Discovery. For me, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know about it. So I, I sent a picture to Ben. I was like, "Look at my setup. I got more. I got more TVs than most restaurants." And he's like, "You know, you could just get Red Zone, right?" And I was like, "What's that?" And he's like, "You watch every game on one TV." And I was like, "Oh, that been cool. Electricity <laughs> price would have gone down. I got I got a big TV at home. I got like a 90 inch TV in my living room. It was a, a little sale I found actually off of TikTok." Um, and went to Target and got me a 90 inch TV a couple years ago, and now that's my uh, prize possession back at home. So. Jason, what kind of a teammate is Danny Jackson? DJ, I mean, uh, he's the ultimate leader, I would say. Um, and, and that doesn't mean he's a very, he's not the guy who's going to be screaming and hollering. He's just, uh, when you say lead by example, he's, he's that's what you're talking about. Um, you know, he, he works hard. He works his hardest at everything he does, and uh, and it's it's really fun to watch, and, and it's really contagious too. So, uh, like when we're in a like a lifting group together, um, it's almost impossible not to go as hard as you can when you're with him because you know he's he it looks like he's close to passing out every time he does something, and uh, you know it, he pushes his body to that point. And he, you know he's been through a lot. He's seen a lot, and you know he's he's done stuff that a lot of people you know don't usually do. So. Uh, you know, you just levitate towards people like that. Um, but yeah, you know, he's just, you know, he's he's the older guy in the group. You know, he's almost 30. Not to rip on D Jax, but uh, uh, but yeah, he's uh, he's an older guy, so he's a lot more maturity. He's been through a lot. He, you know, the Navy SEAL, like that's the ultimate team thing. You know what I mean? So he he brings that to to the football team. What are you looking back on it? Oh. Looking back on it, what did you see in that? Uh, the Minnesota game, as, as you got a chance to go back through the film and, and look it over again. Yeah, I think uh, I think we started off slow. I think that was pretty obvious, um, which you know, which is never okay in any football game. Um, I think defensively, the second half we locked it down, um, but that can't happen. We, it, we can't be a football team that only plays one good half, um, which I, which hasn't been a, which hasn't been a good a common theme. But uh, but yeah, no, that last game, um, you know if. We would have buckled down in the first half. Yeah, I think it would have been a totally different football game. Um, I don't know what the cause for that was, uh, but we put it behind us, and we're not going to let that happen again. That's that's not our standard, and uh, that's not how we play football here. So building off that, do you even address that moving forward? Like when you guys came back to practice today, was there any talk about that slow start, or how oh, long yeah. did that linger? I guess after absolutely. That? I mean, that if you think about, it, I mean that that's kind of uh, looking back at all of our games. That first half is kind of really the the only half that or only time this season that really sticks out where where people ran the ball on us a lot, where they were scoring a lot of touchdowns. Um, so I mean it was the elephant in the room right away when we when we got done with that game. We knew like hey we can't we can't start off games like that because we put ourselves in a hole and um, and you know fortunately we were able to buckle it down in the second half. But uh, but yeah no when we were watching film that's kind of like we were just like what what were we doing why were we like this. Um, how do we fix this? Uh, what do we have to do differently next game? And uh, I mean, I think we we should be fine. I think for the rest of the year, um, 
that's like I said, that's not a normal thing for us. So uh, that that's Coach Coach Shenander's gonna get that fixed, and, and the guys on the on the D line are, are gonna do our best to get that fixed too. Now, you guys had to look at Purdue. They're a little bit different offense, obviously, than mm -hmm. what you played so far. Is there a different level of excitement playing against a team that's a little more pass heavy? Yeah, I mean, I think I think any, every D lineman, I, I personally, I, I love playing game, team games like this. Um, you know, a chance to get after the quarterback. But I think the most important thing is they're going to try. I mean, every team kind of comes out first and tries to establish a run game. Uh, we're going to have to shut that down. So it is an all pass game. Um, I mean, fortunately for Purdue, that's what they like. But uh, you know, that's it's every pass rusher's dream. You know, a game where you can pass rush every a lot of downs. So uh, um, I know our front, our front guys are are excited to be able to get after the quarterback and uh, you know, kind of. Um, get off the ball and you know use our pass rush moves because like, we've been you know playing to run a lot this year in the, in the Big Ten. Does that change your guys' approach significantly the week before practice? Um, just playing polar opposite schemes for me and then like Michigan and. Um, no, be, because like I said, they're they're going to try to establish a run game, um, so we got to be able to shut that down. Um, so we we prepare every game pretty much the same. Um, you know, knock out the run game and get off the quarterback. Um, so that's 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 what we're doing this week. You know, we gotta we gotta be prepared for for their run game. They got some good backs. You know, they got a couple quarterbacks that can run the ball too. And um, but we know their their weapon is uh, is throwing the ball. So, uh, but yeah. So we're, we prepare pretty much every like every week. It's kind of the perfect week for two Yodis, like earning the right to rush the pass. Yeah, exactly. This is definitely earning the right to. Uh, I mean, that's every game. But but yeah, no, it, it's it'll be emphasized this week. Um, we got to shut down the run to be able to rush that quarterback. Quarterbacks, we got a couple. How's the offensive line looking in practice? Uh, they're they're looking good. They're looking refreshed. They were pretty refreshed this week. Um, I think everyone was off that bye week. Um, but yeah, no, they're. I think they're get, they're getting better and better every week. Um, you know, they they've switched some guys up. They got some guys coming back from uh, uh like Brent Banks who was was practicing today, which was good to see him back and uh. Um, they, you know, they just they, it was. We were only half pads today, so I mean, we were only doing so much. But uh, they were they look good. Casey, I know the, the schedule's been a little different for you with you know your your availability, your playing time as the season went on. But you know, for the team in general, um, you know, Coach mentioned I think after after the sixth game about kind of breaking these next six up into individual two game stretches. Mm -hmm. So you're going into the second. Uh, I mean, I think it's a, uh, it's more of a focus on like one game at a time type of thing. Um, I think it's, just, I mean, it is like what well, we have two games and another bye, so um, you know, kind of it's a, it's a whole another week of rest. So I mean, we 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 go out and give every. I mean, it's the standard anyways. Go out and give everything you have. Um, but instead of after that that second game, instead of having to turn around and play another game, we get a, another week off. So. Uh, um, basically, leave everything out on the table. Um, I mean, as you should every game, right? But um, but you know, if you get nicked up, we'll have that week off um, to to heal up. And uh, you know, he he like you were saying, he was saying we we got two short seasons, two two week seasons. So, uh, um, but we're we're taking every game at a time. We're not really looking forward uh, two weeks ahead. You know, we got to focus on, on on who we have in front of us at, at that week. Do you sense any frustration from guys that you sort of are where you are at three and five at this point in time, or do you I think mean, that that has largely stayed out of the the walls here since? Yeah, I, I think I think uh, there's frustration. Um, I, mean, I don't think anyone wants to be three. That's not our expectations. That's not our standard. Um, we know how close we are, and, and I think um, just by being as close to that, that's frustrating itself. But it, it hasn't it hasn't caused anything any difference really I mean it's if, if anything it's making guys work harder it's uh that's kind of the thing about this team is is you would expect people to um, get frustrated and kind of shut things down it's not the case here it's uh when things aren't going we we figure out a way to you know make it practice harder let's fix those mistakes and uh let's let's improve on in, in our current situation why do you think that's different now and it's just a guy the culture we have on the team I mean, it's just kind of the the culture process built um, you know, a lot of the guys here now are really emphasizing, you know, let's like, let's make the best of everything. Um, you know, I don't, no one's, no one's ever going to be happy with a three and five record. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, uh, it's a team thing. We're all, it's the culture. To be honest with you, it's just that guys aren't happy with it. So let's fix it. Do you think you guys are good at three 
shedding, mantling, and flipping a switch. Um, the last time we saw you, you guys kind of had very different halves the defense against Minnesota, first and second. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally think, yeah, we're pretty good at flipping a switch. Um, I think it's tough, uh, like a couple, I mean, you got, we go we go hand in hand with Michigan. Um, you know, that's that was a devastating loss. Same with Michigan State. We had, to, we had to put that behind us real quick, flip the switch and go on to the next week, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what we did. Um, I think, yeah, I think we're pretty good at, at being able to do that and not, not letting the um, the pass, you know, really haunt us. You know, uh, Coach T has a saying, the, the pass is to, is to learn and not to live in. So uh, I think a lot of guys really go by that. How long did that Minnesota loss sit with you? You guys didn't have a, another game to prepare for right away after that one. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a frustrating long week, especially after that bye week, it, with that bye week. Um, but I mean, it it probably went to that that weekend, and we I mean, last week we had two practices, and those were important practices. So uh, we uh, we we had to put it behind us. We had to learn from it. Uh, put it behind us and, and get ready for uh, the two practices that we had last week and then for this week too. So weird, like you guys normally are going to practice more often than that, and you're normally going to practice closer to an opponent. With that. What did you guys do during those practices? Like um, like yeah, a lot of uh, like situation stuff. Okay. Um, you know, like we uh, the coach would put us in a situation, we had to play it out. Put he'd put some uh, some uh, time on the clock, and, or like he would put up a fake score or something like that, and we'd have to play out that situation, whether a two minute or and four minute clock. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, just uh, you know, we ran around a lot. We you know we had that whole week, half of that week off, so we were uh, we were resting up too. Um, a lot of the young guys got some reps and stuff like that too. So yeah, they were they were quicker practices, but they were they were useful. They they were very productive.